Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we'll be painting up some salamander eradicators. Now I built these before from the previous Indominus box set so this time around I'm going to be using regular model glue instead of super glue because of how these things are built. You really have to push them in all the way. So apart from once I clip them off from the sprues, I clean them with a hobby knife, remove the flash and all the excess, and sand them smooth and then glue them together. I tried to print some 3D bases for these models, but I couldn't really figure out how to do a good model, so I'm basically going to use these as a structure or a platform first, and then I'm going to add to it. Now with Liquitex flexible modeling paste, I then apply this into the crevices and to try to make little waves for lava. It didn't work too well. I then take a little sponge and then tap, tap 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 all over the tops and sides of the rocks in order to add, to smooth it out, add more texture and make it look grainy. This didn't work well either. After four days of work I was able to make some salamander bits. A cloak for the sergeant, uh, some markings for their squadron and their heavy weapons, and the salamander logo. With a few drops of super glue, I apply them carefully. They can be moved around and slided across the surface for like one second, but you gotta make sure they're lined up properly, because after a second, they seal on super hard. Now with everything assembled, I prep them for priming. I place them on a disposable board thingy, use some double sided tape there, and then just stick them on. And I will be using general purpose primer bright touch, more specifically gray. This is car primer. I use it because it has a very strong grip, so it's a good foundation for my painting. And once they are done, I then take a close look at the bases and it just looks terrible. So we're gonna fix that. So we're gonna go with Liquitex Ceramic Stucco and we're going to apply this all over the rock parts of the bases. Now with Lead Belcha, Nuln Oil, and Abaddon Black, we're going to paint the black parts, the armor. We're going to coat the, all the guns, the backpacks, and the helmets with Lead Belcha. Once that's done, we're going to use a one-to-one -one mix of Abaddon Black and Nuln Oil mixed together, maybe a little more Abaddon Black than there is Nuln Oil, and then we're going to apply this all over the metal. And once that is dried, we're simply going to do a single layer of dry brushing of lead belcha all over the metal pieces. We want to focus on the edges to pick them out. And quickly, while the stucco is still drying, is soft but not wet, I then take the models and then make their shoe imprints into the ash, or what is going to be essentially ash. I then do a second coat of the Nuln Oil Abaddon Black mix all over the parts of metal that I want to stay black. So the only parts I don't want are just the gun barrel and maybe the ammo that it's holding. And now with Caliban Green, Wa Flesh, and Lauren Force, we're going to paint the armor. We're going to start off with a layer of Caliban Green all over. And you know what? I'm going to try something. 
Before that, I'm going to use some Uriel Yellow and I'm going to dry brush this all over the model, or all over the green, and picking out the edges so that it'll be highlighted with yellow. I mean they don't look like much, but I'm going to try a stipling effect. Then I'm going to go on to wall flesh, and then I'm going to start stipling that all over the model. I then move on to stipling Lauren Forest all over the armor plates, but in the end it doesn't look good and it completely undid the uh, Uriel Yellow. I then bring out Moot Green because the stipling, if the colors are too close to each other, you're not really going to notice. So I decide to go extreme and use Moot Green to try to add another layer of color. And it... eh. I don't know what to think of it. I then want to add some shadow, so I take Agrax Earthshade and apply it all over the green armor. And it adds shadow, but it... I don't know, makes it look just dirty and messy. So then I go back to Moot Green and I stifle a second time. To thinking maybe it'll do better. Not satisfied with the result, I then get some Agrax Earthshade in an airbrush and then try to apply it into the shadows and recesses and underside. Eh, mixed results. The end result, I tried to make it look stipled like stipled metal for armor, but it looks like this will only really work well on tanks, because it, here it just looks messy, dirty, and it, it's not going to be fitting for a salamander. So I try something new. I then go ahead and coat the entire armor in lead belcher. I then try an experiment to try to replicate what I did with the Black Templars. So what I did was on the right I have Lauren Forest, on the left I have Moot Green, and I have mixed an equal part of Bealtan Green, the wash, into it. And then I wanted to see how it would look. On the right is Lauren, on the left is Moot Green. On the legs I apply the Moot Green wash. On the upper body and arm I apply the Lauren Forest Green. And then after that I dry brush them with Lead Belcher again to pick out the edges. And after taking a close look it looks like the Lauren Forest won. I then applied the Lauren Forest mixed with Beal Tan Shade to all the armor. I then used Agrax Earthshade again and then applied it all over to add some more shadow and depth into it to really pick out the armor. Unfortunately it made it look kind of messy in areas. So I decided to take some isopropyl alcohol 91%. Uh, if you want, it's better to have 99% but I can't find it. And I took a brush and I dipped in the alcohol and then I sort of like dry brushed a little bit to get it just moist so the brush is moist with the alcohol and then I basically overbrushed on the sides to clean up some of the alcohol. In some places it went better than others and in some places it just showed through all the way to the metal layer beneath. Well, what can you do? And now with Mornfang Brown Agrax Earthshade and XV88, I then do all their leather pouches and their gun holsters. I start first with Mornfang Brown and apply a layer all over. And once that has dried, I then apply Agrax Earthshade all over. I don't really want it to pool a little bit except towards the buttons and some shadow areas. We're mostly just coating it just to get some color in. And once that is done, we then take Mornfang Brown and then apply it to the raised areas. You'll see them because the Agrax Earthshade will create some shadow and darkness in pools. 
some place here and there. And once that is done, we're going to take a two parts Mord Frame to one part XV88 and we're going to apply it on the edges of the leather and on the higher raised areas along the leather side bodies. You'll notice this when you paint it because the Agrix Earth Shade will ha be a very good guide for the raised areas and the low areas. Alright then, with Lead Belcher, Abaddon Black, Nolan Oil, Gullum and Flesh, and Skeleton Horde Contrast paints, we're going to fix a lot of things and move on. I'm going to start with Lead Belcher, and we're going to apply it to the leather, the metal hoses, the gun handles sticking out of their holsters, we're going to fix up some of the places we accidentally got the green on, on the guns, we're going to clean up some of the guns because not the entirety of the weapon is going to be uh, black. We then will apply Nuln Oil onto the metal. Then with Lead Belcher, we do a light dry brush all over the metal pieces, even some of the black on the guns. We then take the Skeleton Horde Contrast, which is a very good yellow, yellower. It stains the metal. We're going to apply this all over the exhaust ports of the backpacks as well as like two-thirds of the gun barrels. And then with Gullum and Flesh we will apply it to the last third of each gun barrel and the holes of the exhaust ports to show like grime, use, rust, stuff like that. And now with Eshin Grey and Nuln Oil we're going to paint the skin. Now we're going to paint salamander skin. Now their skin may be like ash black, but we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to paint an off black because that way we can actually show more detail. If they're just pure black, eh, meh, it kind of looks lazy and it's not that good looking. So we're going to do with an off black that way we can see the layers. So we're going to start off with a layer of eshin gray all over his skin. We then apply Nuln oil all over his skin. And once that has dried, usually with the help of a hairdryer, we then take a fine brush and then we pick out the details on his face. He has a furrow right above his eyes, his nose, and he has like three wrinkles above his forehead and his cheeks and stuff. So we're going to focus on that. We'll then apply another layer of Nuln Oil. We will then apply another layer of Eshin Grey. And on the top of the head more specifically, we'll want to do like feathery strokes to make sure it blends in better. I then go with some Dawnstone because the details aren't being picked out as well. And so I mix Dawnstone with Eshin Grey like around one to one, maybe a little bit more Eshin Grey at your own discretion. And then I take a fine brush and I apply it at the uppermost raised areas and edges. We're doing a little bit of feathery lines or just little dots onto there to pick out the details. Be careful with the step. I then did Nuln Oil one more time, which I guess was a bad idea. And then off camera, because I had to have this thing so close to my face because it was really hard to see because it was, well, black, hard to see in general. I then carefully, with it very close to my eyes, I couldn't get it on camera. I then did the final details with the same mix again of Dawnstone and Eshin Grey. With that done, take your black color of choice, in my case Abaddon Black, and then I just filled out the shoulder pads. Now with Eshin Grey, uh, Dark Reaper, Dorn Yellow, Uriel Yellow, Troll Slayer Orange, Waz Daka Red, and Corn Red, we're going to do the bases. And we're going to start with a layer of Eshin Grey all over the bases. After that was done, I then took Dark Reaper and then dry brushed all over the bases. That didn't really show. So then I took some Dawnstone and then I dry brushed that and that showed. I then took Dorn Yellow and applied it into the giant fissures. I then took Uriel Yellow and then I tried to dry brush it into the crevices. This really didn't work. I then took Troll Slayer Orange and tried to dry brush it in. This also really did not work. It's just I couldn't get the brush in. And then I went to Wazdaka Red and guess what? It 
didn't work either. It's just the brush can't really fit in and get good coverage in there. I then finish off with corn red and it was just about as effective as all the previous layers I put in there. I then take a thin brush and then I start stippling into the crevices, starting with corn red and going to the lightest color while they were still wet. So basically I was wet blending. And that looked terrible. I then take some Griff Hound contrast paint and I try to just smooth it all over. And this still looks bad. It doesn't look like lava, however, it does look like blood though, so. I'll remember that for the future when I'm doing something corn based. And then with Black Templar's Contrast, we're just gonna paint the, uh, what is it, the gaps in their armor? That plating thing? And then with Waz Daka Red and Troll Slayer Orange, spoiler, I don't use the Troll Slayer Orange, the Waz is good enough. I then do their eyes. I do the lens on the sergeant, the lenses on the troops, and his actual eye with just Waz Daka. And then with Rhinox Hide, we then paint the gun barrel whole. This, it, it fits in with the colors. And now with Wazdaka Red, Troll Slayer Orange, Dorn Yellow, Uriel Yellow, we then paint their right shoulder pad. We start off by layering the whole thing in Wazdaka Red. We then take Troll Slayer Orange and apply it all over the fire symbol that's in their shoulder pad. I then take Uriel Yellow and try to highlight areas on I then take Dorn Yellow and apply it to the edges of the flame. I then realize it just looks terrible, so coating it with Dorn Yellow again at the base, I then take Uriel Yellow and then like wet blend it, mixing it up like 75% of the fire symbol. And with Troll Slayer Orange, I then wet blend about 50% of the model and like the upper tips of some of the fire pieces. I do a slight mix of the Troll Slayer Orange and Wazdaka Red, like a one-to-one, -one, and then place it on the very tips of the fire. And then once that's done, I decide that red is not good enough, so I take Corn Red, and then I apply it to the Devastator logo symbol. And then with Steel Legion Drab, Bane Laid Brown, and Agrax Urshade, we're going to paint the Purity Seals. And we're going to start off with giving them a coat of Steel Legion Drab. Once that's done, we highlight the raised areas, the edges of the paper, with Bane Blade Brown. And then once that's done and dry, we then apply Agrax Earthshade all over, allowing it to pull into the recesses. And once that is dry, we then go back with Bane Blade Brown and then highlight the edges of the paper and the raised areas. We use feathery brush strokes so it blends in better. Now with Wa Flesh, Lauren Forest, and Beal Tan Green, we're gonna paint the shoulder cape. We're gonna start off with a layer of Wa Flesh all over. Then we're going to dry brush Lauren Forest all over it. And then we're gonna apply a layer of Beal Tan Green all over it so it gets in the recesses. And then we will do a final dry brush of Lauren Forest all over it. And then with Abaddon Black and a thin brush, I then pick out the two, the number two that I printed into the symbol. And then with Vallejo Liquid Gold Old Gold, this is an alcohol-based paint, I then apply it on all their shoulder pads, their uh, salamander symbols on the backpack and forward, 
and basically all the filigree and their chest pieces as well. And then with super glue I did a final assembly on the backpacks and some of the guns, or one of the guns. And then with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish we're going to apply this all over the rocks on the bases. And then once that's done we're going to take Army Painter Anti-Shine Matte Varnish and we're going to apply this into the center because if for some reason it still has a shine. As well as I place it on the sides of the legs, the top of the backpack, and the gun and parts of the shoulders, the heads for the helmets, basically wherever players are going to touch the model. And then I glue the models onto the bases, and then once that's done with your basing paint of choice, in my case Mornfang Brown, I then edge highlight the bases, or clean up the bases. And here we are at the end. You know, I've dreamed of this project for a while, wanting to do the Salamander Eradicator since I knew I was going to get a second set of Indominus. But man, I really just kept messing up. I give myself, I don't know, I don't feel it. Maybe a 5 out of 10, maybe a 6, yeah, 5 out of 10. So here's the thing. Once I have done it once, I now know a lot of things I would do better. Well, first off, stipling, I couldn't really seem to get it to work very well onto these small bodies, and I really haven't done the stipling before, so I should have practiced with a vehicle first, I have a better chance of getting it done there. The other thing is, the bases, now with what I know, I sh when I 3D printed them, I should have just printed a bunch of basic rock shapes and then stucco them, because I couldn't really dry brush the lava or paint that in well, I know the Games Workshop tips are to do it first and then apply all the stuff around it. I should have basically just dry brush and painted the bases first, and then apply the rocks and stucco onto them, and then painted the stones over, and that would have had much better looking lava. But this works as blood, uh, what it looks like. The armor, because I this time I thought the stifling effect would actually work, I didn't bother to add my usual, uh, um, was it paste onto the models to make it look like they have a bumpy texture now the bumpy texture does really work well with the dry brushing it allows me to get a lot of accuracy with the dry brushing and it works much better with it when these models are completely clean like this the dry brushing really doesn't work too well uh, and what can I say and as far as the bits goes the cape and well the cape like I mean it paint came out well it was pretty decent but like it had motion, it had stuff, but like, it, it just feels a bit out of place. Like, I could think of what really to paint a leather skin, or a... was a giant lizard skin. The gold, while Vallejo is a good gold, now looking back, this, it kind of just doesn't fit with him. Maybe I should have used a more red gold, like, well, brass, basically, and maybe highlight it with the gold. The skin, he looks a little too, I guess, blue? I don't know. It's like everything I tried to do just didn't pan out that well. Eh, I give it a 5 out of 5. Eh, I was disappointed in that. Well, anyway, moving on. My next project is still up in the air. I have to paint a bunch of other stuff. I won't showcase because I've already done videos on it. So I can't decide. I'm either going to... So I have three potential projects for the next one. First is... Blight Lords for Magikin. The other one, Custom Dice, but I'm going to need to practice more on that. And the other one, more Indominus box sets with more 3D printing and stuff, but I haven't figured out a certain architectural issue which I need to uh, be able to make new bits. Alright then, <coughs> that out of the way, like the video if you like the video, some of you are kind like that, 
dislike the video if you disliked it, share it if you want to share, comment if you have anything to nitpick or want to say hi or something like that. Share it if you want to share it, and uh, I'll see you guys again sometime soon, hopefully.